Welcome to the Casey Cease Show. Casey is your entrepreneurial guide. Dive into weekly insights that blend inspiration with practical strategies to grow your business with integrity. From boosting sales to building strong relationships, Casey shares the essentials to help both your venture and personal dreams flourish. Ready to elevate your entrepreneurial journey? Let's dive in. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Cease Show. Today, I have a friend of mine named Chris Seegers here on the show. Chris is an amazing entrepreneur, investor, uh, business guy, and follower of Jesus. And so I was thrilled when we were chatting a, a couple of, a month or so ago in Chicago, him and his wife, Tara, and she's been on the show as well and really wanted to bring him on here because I know a lot of people who watch the show are interested in entrepreneurship, are business owners, or curious about that whole industry. And so I wanted to bring Chris on because he is uh, very active in that role, but also has a very unique perspective on that. So Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. And why don't you tell, take a few minutes to just explain a little bit more about who you are, and then we'll dive in a little bit into your story. Thanks, man. I really appreciate being here. Thank you for having me on, for giving me your time and also your audience's time. Yeah, man, we're, we're kind of a unique beast. We call ourselves capitalist missionaries. So we pursue Christ through the marketplace. Our goal and our dream is to help activate and equip people to live exceptional lives. We do that through a bunch of different ways. We've got a family office and we buy businesses, oil and gas assets and real estate. And then we've really stepped into the space of helping other folks understand how to sell their business and also acquisition entrepreneurs on how to buy their businesses. And a space we're really leaning into is helping equip faith-led entrepreneurs. So how can we get resources in the hands of folks that really want to serve others and serve God well? And what kind of amazing revolution could we have if we put more resources in those hands? So we've really been exploring that space a lot too. And that's awesome. And so you grew up in business. Like how did this all come to be? Tell us a little bit about your upbringing and uh, your journey to this point. Yeah, for sure. So we, we had chatted a little bit before the show, but I, I came from two totally different worlds. So I am the son of a missionary doctor. I spent seven years of my young life in Chihuahua, Mexico, way down south, about 10 hours south of the border. And we lived in a house that rarely had wa running water, rarely had electricity kind of in and out, no insulation, wood burning stoves. We slept in sleeping bags. It was just kind of a bizarre upbringing, although a wonderful upbringing. And then my other side of the equation was my grandpa was a very successful entrepreneur. And I spent every summer with him in Southern Colorado ranching and just kind of learning about life and business and, and ranching. And so had very different upbringings, like very different sides of the coin. And I think as a result, people didn't know what to do with me for a long time. And maybe I didn't know what to do with myself. Understanding how to really pair my unique abilities with the missional aspect and understand, you know, how to really use my faith and my unique abilities, pair those and go do impact and increase God's kingdom through that. So. It's been a weird journey, man. Like, you know, on one side, we, you've got missionaries who is purely like, hey, doing God's work and the church is, yeah, pastors and missionaries are, you know, they're kind of the A-listers. And then us business guys, we're kind of like the B team. And they're like, hey, just cut a check and help us. And so we really said, no, we want to do both things. It's all one. We think about the integrated life all the time. Like it's all one thing, serving your family and your community, doing business well. That's all kind of how you impact. So we've been just learning about that and building curriculum about it to help other folks that are interested in it. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I always love hearing stories where people landed where they are today. And so you worked a while in oil and gas. Is that correct? Like early in your career? And, and so. I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm still in it actually. So a couple of interesting stories. So my wife, Terry is wonderful. My best friend, my partner, we met in business school in Colorado and my grandparents lived in Dallas. And so we loved Colorado and I promised her, which never make a promise that you can't keep. I said, we will never move to Texas. That was one of the first things I said being married. And of course, God has a way of saying, well, okay, you know, like I'm going to work on you a little bit, Chris. So very quickly after we got out of business school, we really were both very driven type A folks. And we said, hey, where's the best opportunity? And we said, you know, Texas, really, the marketplace is incredible out there. And we didn't have kids. We didn't really have any obligations. We said, hey, what if we just moved out there? And, and she's like, well, I thought you said we'd never moved to Texas. And I said, well, OK, but I'm going to move you to the best part of Texas, way west Texas in the desert. And yeah, exactly. And you know, since you're from Texas, yep. Midland, they have a saying, and it's true. They say, if you're going to fly your wife out, if you've got a job offer, you fly your wife out 
at night and you fly your back out at night that same night because the landscape is not the most attractive. The people and the marketplace make up for it. Like it's an incredible place to live and do business. But anyway, so she moved out there and we both built kind of a series of different businesses out of that one in the oil and gas space. And I still am a, a partner and strategic advisor at an oil company based out of Austin that's doing really well. So anyways, that was kind of the journey of how we stepped into it. And then I continued to just throw crazy ideas at her, Casey. So in 2014, we started looking at this little town in Colorado. And I don't even know if she told you this. And it was for sale. And so I came home. I, I had driven up there by myself. And I came home and I said, hey, this town is for sale in Colorado, very near where I grew up. We should buy it. And she's like, come on, man. Like, you're, we're, we've got all these other businesses going. Like, you're always coming up with these ideas. But what I will say about Tara is like, she's really quick to the update. So as soon as she like can vet it and says, Hey, this is not a, this is not lunacy. Then she's on board. So we bought a town in 2015 and it was a general store with the post office and some vacation rental buildings that were kind of decrepit or I guess buildings that we were planning on turning into it. So we bought a town and converted it and really said, Hey, we want to just bring life to this town. And so we still own it and run it. We have events and corporate retreats and different things that we host out there. So anyways, that was like the infancy stage where we started just kind of throwing different things at the table and understanding how to run teams and processes. And so, yeah, man, it's been a wild ride. You bought a town. I mean, literally you own a town. You bought a town. Hillside, Colorado, 81232. And I'm not the mayor. People always say that. I don't think I could win even if there was an actual position there. I probably wouldn't get voted in. But yeah, man, it's been pretty incredible. Like it's been a fun journey and, and continues to grow as we think through that. So yeah. So what are you working on these days? I know you mentioned to me before we started shooting that you're working on a book and going to have a course. Tell us a little bit about the book and the course. Yeah, for sure. So as our family office, which is called Exceptional Companies, started exploring how do we buy assets and businesses through every cycle, right? So like oil and gas is so cyclical and we got crushed in multiple cycles where our timing just wasn't right. We had a great assets, great teams. And so Tara and I just said, hey, we've got to build out a systematic approach to where no matter what cycle it is, whether it be oil and gas or real estate or whatever, that we can continue to invest in things. And we had already kind of built some businesses. We started buying businesses. And then we really realized like, hey, all of the skills that you learn, if you can apply them to business acquisition, that's a platform that you can buy no matter what. And oil and gas and real estate are that way to some degree, right? You can go into different industries and different markets and different, you know, classes and say, hey, we're going to switch from here and we're going to go buy over in Philly or we're going to go buy over here. But we really said we wanted to be able to buy in our markets. And generally, we're in Colorado, Texas and the surrounding states. So we started buying businesses. We got pretty good at it. And then we started coaching other folks on buying their businesses and then also on folks that were selling businesses. And what we found is most of the sellers were getting very poor counsel especially from business brokers who had never owned a business and really didn't understand how this thing should work. And they were only focused on the transaction piece, whereas we had always been focused on the whole piece. So what do you want to do after you sell your business? You know, how do you set up your life and your estate? How do you continue to do your service and your impact piece? And then the transaction piece, and then really helping coach those folks that may be in their 60 to 70s and saying, hey, this might be your highest impact age. Don't retire. We always say, don't retire, inspire. Like, go find another way to serve. So anyway, so that that was the premise of the book as we continued to coach. And we started a A&D company, Exceptional Business Advisors, that steps into that space. And I was getting a lot of questions. I said, I'm going to write a book for those sellers it's a primer, right? So it's very high level, but as you're thinking about selling your business, here are some of the ways you should think about it, the philosophy piece and the actual like, hey, these are, you know, the actual processes behind how you would sell your business. And really to try to get them interested in talking to our team. And then we'll build a course around that that's a little bit more in depth. And then the goal is that you would start engaging us as an advisor or business transition expert. And we would help you do that really well. And then coach you on not just, hey, you've sold your business, that's it, life's over, but really like, hey, next kind of quarter of your life or half of your life, what do you want to do with that? And we've built a lot of tools and curriculum around that. So yeah, anyways, that's a ton, but. No, that's super helpful. I, I know for me, owning a few companies myself, you know, you don't really think much about selling, especially when you're younger. And so you're not really planning. But what I found for friends of mine who have bought businesses or sold their business 
is that it's not just you wake up one morning like, I think I'm going to go sell it, right? That's not very wise to just immediately start a plan to sell it. I mean, obviously, if you have really strong EBITDA and, and things are, you know, going your way and, and you want to exit, fine. But usually that takes some preparation, right? I mean, if you want to do it the right way and you were sharing with me kind of three or four options you usually present to business owners when they're considering it, do you mind going into those options a little bit for me and for our listeners on what to do with the business? Yeah, absolutely. So our advisory company is kind of two phases. One is more kind of the transition transactional. The second is the advisory, which is how to optimize your business for sale. We prefer, and this is like the worst advice to give if you are trying to get clients, we prefer that you keep your business. Like we would love it if more people just kept their businesses and grew them and sold them through an ESOP or, you know, converted them to a donor advised fund, which if you don't know that, I don't know that much about it. You could talk to my wife or somebody else. But really the goal is like, hey, if you could keep your business, scale it and continue on to perpetuity and kind of get yourself out of the business, that's option one. Option two is scale your business with really the, you know, kind of beginning with the end of mind. If your end is to sell and you can give us 12 to 24 months, we can help coach you on how the marketplace is going to see your business, right? So we've been buyers, we continue to be buyers. We know exactly what a buyer is looking for in a business and how to build that out. We also have used EOS and a bunch of other systems in our businesses and built our own curriculum around how to really like systemize your business to get a higher multiple, to you know build out the people and the processes to where when you go to sell it, you can hand something to a buyer that is so beautiful. They're like, man, I'm willing to pay you your price because this is set up for future growth and you can show me exactly how that is as opposed to just saying, Hey, this is what we've done. We hope you do well in the future. Yeah. I mean, I worked, I was with a, a client of mine a while back and he was looking to acquire a business and a lot of the businesses he was looking at were wanting a premium, but they didn't come with any sort of documentation. I mean, they were kind of like, well, we did everything on paper. And so you're going to have to do everything on paper. And so he ended up buying a business that had a lot more structure in place. And it didn't have a ton of SOPs. We actually went in and did an SOP project with them. And if you're listening, you're like, what are all these words that are running around the standard operating procedures? But basically for blue collar workers, you know, having them sit down and write out their process is one thing. And so we utilized technology and did a lot of interviews and had different writers help us write up from the interviews and develop SOPs and then work with their general manager to develop the, the SOPs. And now they have a massive documentation and their business is growing, but the owner who acquired the business, there were pockets. He didn't really know how it went. I mean, it's a multiple million dollars a year business. And so we went in there and helped them establish it because he, he just didn't even realize that, Hey, having SOPs that are documents, an operating manual for the company adds immense value to the organization as it is already. And I'm surprised to be honest with you, I've consulted with multi-million dollar businesses in marketing and sales and operations, and they all, I mean, many of them don't have that many documented procedures which is uh, a linchpin. And that's, I think, where we move towards the difference between owning a job and actually owning a business and an asset. When I learned that, hey, view your business as an asset that you should care for, nurture, grow. And if you're going to sell it, make sure it's in a position where it's really going to be a blessing and a help to the next person who acquires it, because that will also add immense value to it. And so at what stage, you know, what type of businesses are you best able to help? I know you mentioned oil and gas, you mentioned some real estate, things like that, but specifically with businesses, what type of businesses do you feel like you can offer the most value to, even if they're a few years out from uh, wanting to exit? Yeah, for sure. So we target main street businesses. So we don't do the tech, e-commerce, SaaS side of things. We target cash flowing, consistent businesses. Two niches that we buy in that we love, but we would represent a lot of clients outside of those businesses are blue collar service companies touching real estate. So it could be your HVAC, your plumbing, your electrical contracting, your drywall, your flooring, and then white collar service companies. So that could be your payroll companies your accounting firms, insurance agencies, financial advisory firms. Those are two just pockets of it. But manufacturing, we really look for businesses that are kind of sub 3 million at EBITDA. We'll go down to kind of, you know, half a million dollars of profits is probably the smallest that we would want to represent to sell. But even smaller clients, if they're like, hey, man, I want to get here and I'm willing to put in the effort. If you can show me how to process, you know, what the processes look like to get to that level and I want to grow to a million EBITDA and then I want to sell. That's another space we love to step into. 
And I love what you're doing, Casey, because you're exactly right. Like we say business is so simple. It's people and processes. That's it. Like you can overcomplicate it and you say it's all these other things. But if we can help you really understand your people and how to coach them and how to elevate them, and if we can help you understand your processes and scorecards and your planning, then all of a sudden you have this huge advantage over every other business. If you have good people and you love on them, you'll be successful. But if you have good people and good processes, you're unstoppable in any industry. So that's where we love to step into that play. And we've done things too, where we'll say, hey, we'll, we're willing to take a minority stake into your company and we'd love to just scale and help you scale. And we'll have some skin in the game so you know we're engaged. So we've done a lot of different things, but yeah, that's the area we step into. We really don't like to get into kind of the investment bank size or the private equity size. We really like the main street businesses and I think they're underserved and, and they need folks that have done it. Like that's we, one of our core values is owner's advantage. We've done it, right? So like you might have an attorney or a business broker or somebody who's giving counsel that's never run a successful business, never exited and really doesn't know how to do it. They might have some ideas of how to do it, but they've never done it. We've done it and we continue to do it. So that's where we think we've got a big advantage. So yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but that's kind of no. Funny. That that yeah. was extremely helpful, and just you know, as people are listening in, wanting to you know learn more about that, I know your book will be coming out, and I'm sure we'll be sharing that with them. Ready to skyrocket your business and truly connect with your audience on a whole new level? Unleash the power of your story with Lucid Books. Imagine transforming your insights and experiences into a captivating book that not only cements your status as a thought leader, but also weaves a strong bond with your ideal clients. At Lucid Books, we're more than a publishing house. We're your creative partners on a journey to turn your wisdom into a masterpiece that speaks directly to the hearts and minds of your audience. Join forces with us and let's embark on this incredible adventure together. Your story has the power to inspire, engage, and elevate. Are you ready to share it with the world? So let's turn shift gears a little bit because you have a very interesting perspective. Having grown up as a son of a missionary doctor in your early years, having a grandfather who was a successful entrepreneur, you know, kind of reconciling those two worlds of the meek, you know, sleeping bag life to the ranch in Southern Colorado. Your view of business is beyond just a money-making endeavor. And you're sharing that. So share with me a little bit your idea. You say that you're what is it, capitalist missionaries or how do you phrase that? Yeah, capitalist missionaries. Man, I think it's pretty simple. Like we, we want to live an integrated life. And what that means to me is every day, every second of every day, I want to have congruency in who I say I am and what I'm doing, right? So I don't want to go to work or go work in one of my businesses and feel like this is not in alignment with my mission, right? I don't want to go home and feel like, Hey, my family life is not part of the mission or my marriage is not part of the mission. We believe our job is stewardship, right? Like it's stewardship of our time, our talents, our treasures, and then your unique abilities. So God has allowed my wife and I to have some tremendous talents on the business acquisition, optimization, growth. And we want to really just pour those out onto other people. We didn't want, we'd never felt comfortable just like growing these businesses and feeling like it's siloed. And then, hey, let's write a great check to our church or to these other great causes. And then we go back to making money and we kind of turn off the missional piece. So how that relates is we coach our team, we coach our clients. And like I said, we really want to activate and equip people to live exceptional lives. We teach a lot about the architecture of life. So I believe that God has created an architecture in life. Even if you don't believe in God, you still live in that architecture. It's, you know, it's gravity. It's how successful businesses can and cannot be operated. There's just universal laws that are the same. So we start coaching people about that and just, hey, here, you know, habits, like here are some of the frameworks around habits. Here's clarity of where you want to go in life, where you are and the path to lead there. And then as we can create value for people, we can point them towards Jesus and say, hey, there's an architect to all of this and he's for you. Like he loves you. He's for you. He didn't create these laws to be against you. He didn't create the 10 commandments to be against you. He created it because he knew if you followed that framework, it would give you the richest and fullest life. 
And so if we can do that in business with our clients, with our team, and we don't push it, we're not like, we don't have a Jesus fish on our trucks or anything like that. We just want to really like exemplify good stewardship. And then if they say, hey, why are you doing this? We can say, well, this is why we're doing it. Yeah, I found, you know, people have asked me because, you know, I spent, you know, many years serving the church in various capacities, even spent nearly nine years as a lead pastor of a church that I planted. And now I, I serve as a lay elder of the church where I serve now. And, and I was talking with a guy this past weekend and he said, hey, are you sad not to be in ministry anymore? And I said, well, I feel like I'm as much in ministry, if not more in ministry, doing what I do now than even when I was pastoring. And not to downplay the role of pastors, the pastors that have been in my life have been extremely impactful. And I'm prayerful and hopeful that, you know, I was able to make an impact during my season as a lead pastor, but I didn't graduate out of ministry. Ministry is a way of life for people who follow Jesus. But I found that my gifts and skill set in the public sector as well has been able to open up more doors for conversations. And if you think about it, you and I both coach business owners and leaders and the impact we're able to have on that life that then impacts their family, but also their employees, their vendors, even their competitors, the way they do business is extremely important. And I know you've done work in oil and gas and I cut my teeth a few years ago, coming out of the pastorate, doing some consulting for some various businesses that work in oil and gas. And you can lose your Jesus real fast sometimes in that industry and, and being able to walk that line and try to follow Jesus through that and meeting other people to do it is something that I think, you know, has been a gift to me having now been on the other side of the pulpit, as it were, to see that, you know, hey, I mean, it's hard enough being a Christian as a pastor sometimes, even though your environment is conducive towards that, but it's a real challenge. I mean, in commerce and people look at you like you have three heads when you say it's not just about the money, it's about people. And they're like, what? That's so disorienting at times. But for me, that's been such a big opportunity to open up conversations about spiritual things that they might blow you off at first, but you're the first person they're going to want to go speak with if they're having problems with their kids or in their marriage or something like that. Hundred so, percent, yeah. and and we've gotten some pretty get bad counsel from masterminds we've been in, and I think generally the business environment. So I think most quote unquote gurus that are in the space, entrepreneurial space, are like, hey, try to get to passive as quickly as possible, right? It's all about passive income. It's all about stacking cash. It's all about this and that. It's all about really, which is selfish. And I've pushed back a lot to say, hey guys, for us, at least for me and my household, for us in our family office, the only way we can have an impact in this life is to serve others in some form or fashion. Absolutely. And a great mentor of me told me, he's like, Chris, you have one simple decision. He's like, you only need to make one decision in your life. This is it. Are you going to serve yourself your entire life or are you going to serve others? That's the only decision you have to ever have to make. If you serve yourself only, you're going to have a miserable existence. Whether you have faith or not, you, it's misery. That's like psychology, like every data point will point towards that, like that you're not going to have a good life. If you serve others, even if you don't have faith, if you just say, hey, I'm going to pursue serving others in some form or fashion in the marketplace, in ministry, in the nonprofit space, in my family at home, that's where you can find true fulfillment. That's why God commanded us. The two greatest commands are love God and love others. So it's like, hey, serve God who loves you and is for you, and then go serve others. But do it in the way that God has gifted you, right? If you're gifted to be in the entrepreneurial space and you're trying to be a pastor, which is kind of what I was struggling with, that's not where God has you. Now, maybe he does. I don't know. I'm never going to speak for somebody. If you're called to be a pastor, if you're called to work in the home, right? Like that's the greatest calling I think ever. Like, but that's your passion and serve your kids and serve your husband and serve your community and serve the other folks. Like wherever you're called to be, serve others. And that's the only decision we have. So I've been pushing back a lot on just Main Street Media because I believe that what they're encouraging you to do is going to lead you to be a very rich, miserable human being which there's not enough. I always tell my clients, I'm like, hey, yeah, so what, you're wealthy, you can just be sad in a nicer truck or in a nicer couch. Like it's, you know, That's it's right. not gonna alleviate the isolation and loneliness. So one last thing I wanted to chat with you about before we wrap up today is buying businesses. Who, let's say, I, I come across a lot of people who are looking to buy businesses, wanna look into that. Who's your ideal client or partner to work with in that regard? Who do you look for to help them? Like what kind of capital deployment are they needing to look for working with you. Yeah, for sure. So I think we'll coach almost anybody that's serious. 
I've kind of said, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are like, you know, I don't really, I guard my time and I don't give my time to people. And I'm the exact opposite. I'll always take meetings with folks if I can if think I can serve them, but I usually give them some criteria to see if they're serious or not. Right. So that's why our second book is going to be focused on business acquisition. Then we'll build a course and then kind of say, Hey, let, let us coach you. But really it's, are you serious? Do you have some sort of capital? Do you have some idea of what you want to buy? And are you willing to put the grit and the grind into it? Like, this is not easy. I believe it's the greatest source of wealth generation in the world, but it's not an easy job. And you're going to have to learn a lot. It's going to be sleepless nights. It's going to be outworking other people, which I think most people have kind of said is not a real thing anymore, but it totally is. But I think it's folks that are serious, that are willing to prove that they're serious by going through the resources and the courses, going through the vetting process. And then we try to partner up with, you know, acquisition family office or acquisition entrepreneurs and say, hey, let us go target. If you say, hey, Casey, I want to buy, you know, small manufacturing companies that have 3 million of revenue and this is why, this, that, and the other, we'll help you build a buyer's profile. And then we'll go actually target those manufacturing companies and try to bring a really good quality company that is going to, you know, help you grow your wealth and your legacy and your impact for a long time. We don't represent any junk. Like, that's just not who we are. We don't need the fees. Like, we want to represent great businesses. And we also want to represent great entrepreneurs that are serious about it. So that's really where we focus. Man, I love, so I've helped coach a bunch of young entrepreneurs in forms of fashion. And they've really mentored me too, right? I always think it's like, you should have people 10 years behind you, people in your age group, 10 years, 15 years ahead of you in your group, because they you know, provide so much insight, but the, the folks that I've been involved in have done, you know, high level oil and gas companies, drilling companies, plugging companies, fat countertop fabrication companies. Like we've been like the whole gambit of where we've focused and how we've helped. But yeah, I'd love to be in touch with any entrepreneurs that are interested in this and just say, Hey, I need some counsel on how to do that. We've been through the process a bunch ourselves. And so that's kind of, we bring that up, owner's advantage to that space as well. That's excellent. When are you hoping to release your book? So Selling Main Street will be out June. The course should be out kind of August, September timeframe. If people are interested, they can reach out to me, either chris at exceptionalcompanies.com or xcoadvisors.com, either of those. But yeah, and then the Buying Main Street, will, which will be the buy side book, that should be out by the end of the year. And then the course will follow shortly. And really that's just to help kind of build this funnel of people that are looking so on the sell side, we're representing all these amazing owners that are like, I would love nothing better than to have a young person to carry on my legacy. And we're like, well, we need to build that funnel of young, you know, capable entrepreneurs that we're coaching that are capable of doing this. And then really find that buyer sellers fit. I think that's the magic that we're really good at. We never encourage a seller to sell if they're like, and this person just seems like they're in it for the money. They don't care about my team. They don't care about my clients. We're like, that probably isn't a good fit for you. And let's go try to find some other potential buyers that would be a better fit for you. So we really want to build both those funnels because the baby boomer transition is going to be massive. It already is, but I think next two to five years, it's just going to be a tidal wave. And so we're really trying to coach the other side too and just say, hey, let's try to get hundreds of these young entrepreneurs, coaching them up and understanding processes and people and how to actually run a business. And then when we can marry the two, we don't have this huge like gap in the US economy where it's like, oh my gosh, all these businesses are just shutting their doors. At least we can be a part of that transition. So no, I, I think that's an amazing strategy and something I definitely am going to be talking with you more about is as I want to diversify more portfolio and and the more I learn about business, the more I love the people and, and the processes and the teams and being able to empower. And, you know, I, I mean, there are ways to invest passively and, and build wealth that way, but I don't think we're meant to just sit here and be passive, but to be proactive and to be salt and light into the world and in commerce and to really invest in people and in communities and enrich lives and not shrink back, but move forward courageously. And so through commerce and through the marketplace, it's a wonderful place to be. So Chris. I'm really grateful you came by. Where can people find you? You shared your email address. Where else can people find you online? Man, we I don't do a lot of social media intentionally. And maybe this is, you need to help me with this, but we've been almost anti-social media to some degree. We use it a little on the business, but I'm old school, man. Like Chris at exceptionalcos.com. Shoot me an email or check out xcoadvisors.com. That's our advisory business or exceptionalcos.com. That's kind of our family office high level website. 
we're going to be putting out a lot more content. We really like with technology, we just had a huge conversation about technology. We want to make sure that everything we do is helpful. We don't want to just put out things to get people to read more, to get people to do more, to get like, we really want to put out very intentional tools and curriculum. So we love to engage with people on a much deeper authentic level than just put out a TikTok video that, you know, doesn't really do that much. Like we're really kind of old school in our philosophy there, but who knows, maybe you can change my mind on that. No, I, I, I wanted to. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that needs to be, and we can have this little conversation right here live is like, uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday. He's like, man, I hate social media. I'm like, then don't worry about being there. And he's like, but I need to be. I said, why? He's like, for my clients. I said, is your target avatar active on social media? And he said, well, they're on LinkedIn. I said, well, can you tolerate posting once a week on LinkedIn and then connecting with a few people you like? Well, I could tolerate that. And then I have an app that he can use that he doesn't have to even get on LinkedIn. He can just in engage from this platform and not even worry about it. So I, I don't think you have to now, some of my marketing peers would disagree, but I wanted to encourage you that, Hey, there are strategic ways to reach who you want to reach, or you go to people like me that navigate that space and say, Hey, can you help me get the word out and I'd be glad to do that. You were about to ask something. So I'm going to let you, if you remember what you're going to say, you're still young enough to have that memory. So. Oh, I was going to tie back to your last point before we yep. started talking technology, just about missional impact in the marketplace and just as an encouragement. So I had a, I have a friend who's in nonprofit and he's really looking to get into the business space and buy a business. And I was encouraging him with the story. So we coach all of our team through a bunch of different things. We use financial literacy, Dave Ramsey, we do atomic habits, we do mindset coaching, like all kinds of curriculum, including our tools. So if we want to help you know, activate and equip somebody to live an exceptional life, we dang well better be able to show them the path and give them tools. And one of our young men in one of our businesses came to me and I was just like, man, I'm just so impressed with your progress. And he's like, Chris, no one ever in my life has mentored me ever. And I'm thinking some of the stuff that we're talking about is pretty basic, right? We've been in this space for a long time, 15 years. And so a lot of this stuff, I'm like, man, this I don't feel like I'm helping him. I don't feel like I'm giving him enough meat to it. And he's like, let me just tell you the things that have changed. I'm working out every day now. He's lost like 40 pounds. They have a financial plan for their family. He's having conversations with his wife about marriage, how to explore marriage and grow their marriage. They're having conversations about their son and education and how they should, you know, the habits of the house and, you know, limiting video gaming and different things like that. All of that came out of probably three or four sessions. And this is, you know, if you have a business, you might be able to impact hundreds, thousands, more people. And that's why we really want to put out more content to really get people activated and equipped for that. Um, so that's just my encouragement. When people start, if they're faith-led folks and they have an entrepreneurial bent, I'm like, your church is the marketplace. That's our church is the marketplace. We still, you know, continue to go to church and are actively involved in our church. But when I go to work every day, I'm like, hey, church is still going. It's Monday morning and this is church. This is church for me. We're two or more are gathered, man. We're just trying to do God's work. So anyways, I wanted to tag onto that because I've been really like trying to change that frame with a lot of believers to say, hey guys, like it's all one thing. Like mission work is mission work, whether it's in your family or in the, you know, in church or in the entrepreneurial space. So. Well, Chris, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm sure we'll be back again. And for those of you tuning in, thanks so much for stopping by the KCC show. Uh, if you don't mind, leave a like, leave a comment or review, and feel free to share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Casey. That wraps up this episode of The KCC Show. Make sure to visit our website, thekccshow.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. You might also want to check out our Book for Business consultation, available at Lucid Books, or double your sales strategy session at Planify Agency. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.